Welcome back. We're on to the next lesson. We're starting on page 32 and going through page 35. We're going to talk about insect design and how these different insects have different shape or different colors and why God made them this way. Uh, we have one particular vocabulary word that we're going to focus on and this is called proboscis. Let's say that again, proboscis. We'll learn on the, the next couple of pages of what that is talking about. So let's get right into our lesson and uh, we'll talk about it as we go along. God created many kinds of insects. Some are colorful and others are plain. Some insects are long and slender. Some are short and fat. Some insects crawl, others fly, hop or even swim. Each insect shows God's care for his creation. He has given each insect what it needs to help it survive or live in its ecosystem. Now, if you look at these different kinds of insects, and remember from the last lesson, uh, there are almost one million different species of insect, and not all of them look the same. They have different shapes and different mouth parts and uh, different colors, but God made them that way uh, for a specific purpose and plan, uh, and most importantly, so they can survive in their environment. Each insect has a different kind of food that they need, um, a different way of protection, a different kind of home, and God made their bodies to help them live in their ecosystem. Let's continue on. Insects are small, but they are not helpless. They have many forms of protection. These ways of protection help insects stay alive. Insects are arthropods. Now let's stop at that word just for a moment. Let's do a little review about what an arthropod is and the five characteristics from the last lesson. Okay, the first one, it means it has no backbone. That's right. If you said invertebrate, that's correct. The next one, they have separate body sections. For an insect, it's a head, the middle, the thorax, and then the bottom part is called their abdomen. The next part is their jointed legs. Remember, they, they, they're kind of formed at an angle, a 90 degree angle. The next one, exoskeleton. And what does that mean? Well, if you said the hard outside covering, you're correct. It's their outside skeleton. It's what protects the muscles on the inside and keeps their shape. Now, what do all exoskeletons do? When they get too small, it's like taking off a coat. They take it off. So they have to shed or molt their exoskeleton. So let's continue on. Since insects are arthropods, each insect has an exoskeleton. This tough shell helps protect the insect. It makes it harder for other animals to eat the insect. The exoskeleton also provides support for the insect's muscles. Now I mentioned in the last uh, lesson that the exoskeleton is about as hard as your fingernail. So it's kind of tough for bigger animals to eat through or to bite through that hard exoskeleton. And that's that crunchy sound it makes when you step on an insect. Let's continue on. Many insects, uh, like other animals, are protected by camouflage. Ooh, we heard that word before uh, in chapter one. Camouflage means what? It means they, it's very difficult to see in their environment. Camouflage helps these insects hide. Some insects may be a color that blends into their normal background. Other insects, such as the orchid man mantis, which is on your page, have shapes that look like their surroundings. And this, this particular mantis looks like the orchid flower. Some insects do not have to hide. Their bitter taste or bad smell uh, makes other animals avoid eating them. The insect may have bright colors to warn other animals to leave it alone. So before we go on, uh, I have a couple of pictures I want to show you. For instance, this is an example of an insect that is camouflaged. Can you see that? Now that looks to me like a bunch of leaves, but actually that is an insect on the top. And it's so well camouflaged, uh, it looks almost exactly like the leaves underneath. There even are some imperfections on its body to help it blend more with its environment. So this is an example of an insect that is protected by camouflage. Uh, another picture, now you have seen this one before. Uh, we're going to focus on the bottom one of the ladybug. 
Now, you'll notice that the color is a very bright red. And I mentioned in the last chapter that many birds avoid eating the ladybug uh, because of its red color. They know that red tastes bad. So they avoid eating them. Uh, so this is another way that this, this insect is protected. Why? Birds don't like the taste. This is why this one is protected, because it looks like him. Um, another way insects are protected is this one. I'm not sure if you're familiar with this insect. This is, this is common name is called the stink bug. Now, if you step on it, it releases this gas or odor that doesn't smell pleasant at all. And I'm sure that that unpleasant smell would also make this insect uh, very untasty to other animals. So this insect, this is a big pest. I see these things all the time and they, they fly around, but don't step on them because they'll stink. Try to just swoosh them out the window. Okay, let's go ahead and continue on uh, in our book on page 33. Mimicry is another way some insects are protected. They mimic or look like something that they are not. Remember, mimic means to copy. Some insects naturally mimic uh, insects that are poisonous or taste bad, kind of like the ladybug and the top one was the spider. Others, such as the owl butterfly, mimic larger animals. The wings on the owl butterfly have large spots, and you can see the example in your book. The butterfly looks like a much larger animal than it actually is. The spots may confuse an animal looking for a meal. So small er, animals that would usually eat this butterfly as a meal might see those spots and think, ooh, that's an owl, and I'm scared of an owl, and they'll run away. It kind of confuses them. So it protects that particular insect. Uh, let's continue on. Oh, I, want, I also wanted to remind you what mimicry was, okay? So like the ladybug and the spider, we have two butterflies. The bottom one is the one we think of commonly. This is the monarch butterfly, and the top one is called the viceroy. They look almost the same, but if you look very, very carefully, you'll see some differences. But birds, they look at the viceroy and think, mm -mm, this is the monarch butterfly. I don't want to eat it. It tastes bad, so this one is protected. So remember, when two animals look the same, it's called mimicry. <clears throat> Speed is the means of protection for many insects. If you try to swat or kill a fly or a mosquito, you probably did not find it easy. Those insects can move quickly. This speed helps the insects escape from birds, other animals, and even people. So here's an example of an insect. Get up close. This is, uh, the common name is called a dra dragonfly. And I'm sure you've seen these all around you. Um, I know they're very, very common here in Korea. Uh, little, little hint, jamjari is the Korean word for dragonfly. And these things can move super fast. Um, their speed is what protects them. Other insects protect themselves by stinging or biting. One sting from a wasp will cause an animal or person mm -hmm, uh, to avoid a second meeting, meaning I, if I see a bee or a wasp, I run away. I don't try to bother it. Flea bites are unwelcome to animals and people. Some insects, such as the fire ant, can both bite and sting. Ooh, flea bites are awful. Um, poor animals, uh, fleas love to be on animals, and if you ever see an animal scratch itself, it's you might, you might want to check them out and give them a bath because they probably have these little tiny insects called fleas that like to bite, and it itches the poor animals. Uh, so I have an example here of an insect. Uh, we're going to focus on the bottom one. This is commonly known as the bumblebee, and it protects itself by the stinger. Um, when you see these, I would avoid them. Now, this top one, this one is a fly. It's not a bee, but it looks just like the, the bumblebee down here. So that's an example of mimicry. But another way he's protected is by its stinger. Okay. Um, we're going to continue on in our, our lesson, page 34. Now, just like they have different ways of protection, like food, water, and protection, they also have different ways or different things that they eat. 
and their mouth parts are different depending on the insect. So we're going to learn about the different ways of eating. So let's keep going on page 34. Different insects eat different foods, so they need different mouth parts to eat. Some insects chew their food, while others suck their food. God made each insect with the mouth part it needs. Insects with chewing mouth parts usually have two strong jaws. Their jaws grind from side to side. And I'm going to stop there just for a moment. Our mouth, when we chew something, it goes up and down. And we have our teeth to help us inside. But, for example, this grasshopper, it chews from side to side. And its mouth is kind of like this. So it's... Okay? So we do this up and down. But chewing insects go from side to side. Okay? And they grind their food. These insects usually eat plants. They sometimes cause great damage to crops. And an example of crops would uh, be rice or corn or wheat. Uh, they'd like to eat those things, and that can cause a lot of damage. Grasshoppers, crickets, termites, and beetles are all chewing insects. Other insects have sucking mouth parts. Some sucking insects have long, piercing mouth parts. These mouth parts parts are almost like small beaks, like on a bird. Sucking insects often feed on plants, so they're getting the juices out of the leaves or maybe the nectar out of the flower. They can suck the juices from a plant and damage it or hurt it. Aphids are one kind of tiny sucking insect. The mosquito, oh, we don't like mosquitoes, is another sucking insect. It sucks juices from plants. But a female or girl mosquito sometimes sucks blood from an animal or people as well. A mosquito uses a long tube called a proboscis, and I told you we would get to that vocabulary word, and I'll explain. The mosquito makes a small hole in the skin of an animal or a person. Then it sucks the blood through it, the proboscis. Since mosquitoes suck blood, they can spread diseases or sickness. A mosquito that bites a sick animal or human may pick up diseased blood. When the mosquito bites another victim or another animal or person, it may leave some unhealthy blood. That victim may get a disease. And in some countries, um, the, the, the disease called malaria gets spread through mosquitoes and they have to be careful. I don't think that's a problem in America or in Korea, uh, but there are some countries that have problems with malaria spreading. Let's continue on on page 35, and then I have some more pictures I'm going to show you. Butterflies and moths are also sucking insects, but you won't be attacked by them. They do not suck blood. They only suck the nectar in flowers. That's the sweet part inside the flower. The nectar is the sweet liquid that some flowers produce. The proboscis of these insects reach deep into the flower. It coils up when the insect is not using it. So I have a picture here I want to show you of some different mouth parts. And all of these are called, a, uh, it, for these, for these three, they're called a proboscis. Now for our chewing insect, that is different. But we're going we're gonna to focus only on the first three. We're not going to focus on this one. All right. So the first one, this is an example of maybe of a grasshopper head. Um, and you can see its mouth here. It it, how it has uh, the, it'll chew leaves and it will chew from side to side, not up and down like we are. Now, this is a, probably an example of a mosquito head and their proboscis, which is this long tube here, it, it will pierce the skin kind of like a needle. and It'll make a small hole and it will take blood um, out of an animal or a person. Uh, but they also use this to suck the, the water uh, or plant juices from the leaves of a plant. Now, this is also called a proboscis here, but it's different. This is the head of probably a moth or a butterfly. And you can see the difference here. Here, this one's straight up and down. It doesn't uh, coil like this one does. This one stays straight up and down like a needle. But this one stays coiled when they're not using it. But when they're ready to eat, they'll land on a flower and it will become straight like this one. And then they'll drink the juices or the nectar out of the flower, and then when they're all done, whoop, it coils back up. The last one I'll just explain just a little bit. This one is called 
uh, a sponging mouth part, and the bottom here kind of acts like a sponge, absorbing whatever liquid that they need. Okay, so those are the, the different mouth parts on an insect. So we have chewing, this one's piercing, this one is siphoning. Okay, piercing and uh, siphoning is almost the same thing, but you can see the different shape. And the last one, sponging, it acts like a sponge to absorb liquid. Okay. All right, so that is the end of our lesson. Um, I would encourage you to do the two questions on page 135. And I would also encourage you to do activity manual 23 and 24. You can use this lesson to answer the questions. And I forgot on the last lesson that we did that you should also do uh, the two questions on page 29. And then on activity manual page 22, just do the top half. And what it's asking you to do is draw the missing parts uh, on the insect and then label the different body sections and then give some information about the insect. Don't do the part about the spider. We'll do that in another lesson. I hope you have a great day. See you later.